This was a life that mattered. Harold Dow was such an extraordinary man because his life touched so many others. To the public, he was a tireless correspondent, covering some of the most important stories of the last four decades. From 9-11, where he barely escaped the falling towers, to the return of POWs from Vietnam. To his friends and family, he was a loving, laughing, caring man. He brought those qualities to work with him, and they made him one of the best in the business. Harold Dow said he was most proud of this story. Getting people registered to vote was a big part of his life. A major, major part of his effort. Looking at the historical importance of the Obama inauguration through the eyes of civil rights martyr Medgar Evers' widow. Just weeks before he died, Harold won an award from the National Association of Black Journalists for this story, Best Long Form Television Feature. I buried my head in my hands and tears began to fall. I couldn't stop them. And I said, Medgar, do you see what has happened? Merle Evers' husband was killed in the 60s. We made it. Not so long before Harold became the first African-American reporter in Omaha. Many people believe he paved the way for other African-Americans to enter the business. It was a dangerous time to be black and on TV. Harold knew he could be in trouble immediately after his first newscast. Lee put me on the air on the newscast at 6 o'clock the very first day I arrived. Now, when I got off the air, I stumbled through this thing. I was like a deer caught in headlights, you know what I mean? But, but I stumbled through it, and I got to the newsroom, and everybody, all the switchboard phones were lit up, and all the reporters and editors were trying to explain to these corn huskers what had just happened. The news director started carrying a gun after receiving death threats. Harold never did, although he thought about it. Last Tuesday, the jury selection process began behind closed doors. But before long, his hard work and big personality disarmed the public, and he won people over. In a CBS News exclusive interview, she talked with reporter Harold Dow. He landed an exclusive interview with kidnapped heiress Patty Hearst. In your days of captivity, what were the conditions like uh, while you were being held there? Well, I was put in a closet and blindfolded and it was hot, stuffy. It was Harold who got the first network interview with O.J. Simpson after Simpson was acquitted of murder. Some people out there are upset that O.J. Simpson's holding this event at his house. Uh, can you understand why they're upset? Do you understand? No, I don't understand, and I don't really think it's about me. I think it's about them more than it is about me because I can't imagine anybody being against what's going on here. Hello, testing, one, two, New York, are you there? He did what it took to get a story on the air. On 9-11, he didn't have a camera crew, but he had a phone. I'm at a subway station, I just ran down the stairs, I didn't even look at it, it's right around the corner from the World Trade Center. We heard the building coming down, and that's what we were running from. Literally, people ran out of their shoes trying to get out of the way of this thing. Harold started with 48 Hours even before it was a regular series. This suspect did not look like a drug dealer. 48 Hours on Crack Street was a groundbreaking look at the drug epidemic, and Harold Dow's Beat on the Streets was born. Does anybody really understand how big this problem is? I don't think society really acknowledges the epidemic that we have here didn't matter which streets, it could be a road in Ghana where he went to cover a humanitarian mission helping blind people. So now because of you, everybody's getting help. When 48 Hours got a spot on the schedule, Harold found a home. I got no problem with that. Logos changed, time slots changed, but his work never wavered. That scenario fits the toxicology reports. He was fascinated with almost everyone he met. You are one of the three? Yes, I, I was. was. Yes, Mary Wilson. Each new person was to him a new opportunity to learn about their lives. And, and this weighs 30 pounds? About 30 pounds. 
Layla Ali is Muhammad Ali's daughter. I grew up when my dad is the most famous man in the world. Did you ever get into fights because of your dad? You know how kids are. A lot of times just making fun of maybe my dad's health or situation. Yeah, I probably did get into a couple fights because of that. You win? I just had to ask though. The look said it all. <laughs> <laughs> 48 hours allowed Harold to do what he did best. Keep rolling. Put people <laughs> at ease, often yeah. in very uneasy places, yeah. and get them to tell their stories. It was one party that never stopped. Rapper Master P took Harold on a tour of his New Orleans. I mean, you see the shoes up on the uh, pole. I mean, that's somebody that, that died from back here. Is that what that means? Yeah. Yeah. And Harold hung out with heavyweights. How do you want history to remember Mike Tyson? <laughs> Mike can kick some ass. <laughs> that's what I say about these guys. Oh, they can kick some ass. But the story that moved him more than most others was about an 11 year old girl few people had ever heard of. Come on. Her name is Crystal oh, Searles. She had a terrifying story to tell about narrowly escaping death at the hands of a serial killer. Crystal had just met Harold, but she felt comfortable enough to tell him her story. And so he came toward me with a knife and he leaned over the bed and he said, move your hands because my hands were over like this. And then he just cut my throat. That young girl stayed in Harold's mind. Ten years after they met, Harold revisited that story, and Crystal still remembered him. <laughs> I'm next. <laughs> I'm doing great. It's so good to see you again. Good to see you too. You look great. Thank you. You look good too. <laughs> he relived the emotion he felt a decade earlier when he saw Crystal Searles go into court to testify against the man who almost killed her. To see her walk into that courtroom with her chest out as she took the witness stand. Uh, she was there for business, and uh, she did it. Throughout his career, he won five Emmys, including one for a story about American troops in Bosnia. This war was about territories. This war about was land. about, it's definitely about, about land. About power. About power. CBS News correspondent Harold Dow is standing by live tonight. He won another Emmy for his coverage of the bombing of Pan Am Flight 103. So, Dan, the pain generated from that tragic crash in Scotland is truly being felt all over the world this evening. What kind of weapons do you guys? Automatics. And when Harold did a story on public housing projects in Chicago. I'm trying to understand this. He won a Robert F. Kennedy Award, one of the most sought after awards in journalism. I mean, are you looking at this in degrees? Like it's worse to rob and not so bad to sell dope? Uh, They're yeah. both wrong. Yeah, they both are wrong. He also won a George Foster Peabody Award for a 48 Hours report on Runaways. The awards committee said this broadcast performed a notable public service. How determined is Satara to be successful and to make it? How determined are you? Yeah. determined enough to make it, period. You know, I'm going to. It's no if I make it, it's I'm going to make it. Harold had a soft side, but he was no pushover. For Harold, the next assignment was his next adventure. He loved the work. That is a big bear. Is it dangerous for me to be this close? and would do anything for a story. So this is like calling all shots. That's right, it's, it's, it's a dinner bell. Uh, almost anything. But on this assignment, in spite of all these beautiful surroundings, I just had to draw the line and say no. No way, no how. You should come on in, check it out. No way, no how. Sharks were off limits, and so were snakes. Everyone knew that about Harold, which is why one 48 hours crew and one cooperative lawman set up an interview. What's, what, what is a snake? What's a snake? And set up Harold very close to one big snake. <laughs> you guys set me up. Johnny, that's a loud gun, Johnny. Oh. 
Harold had a lot of rules of the road. He would only rent cars that he called deep breathers, Cadillacs if you please. He'd never stay in a hotel room above the 10th floor, so firemen could get to him easily if necessary. And most importantly, we all knew no dinners in restaurants without tablecloths and no missing meals. We're going to have time for lunch? Of course. Good. <laughs> Today, his colleagues remember Harold Dow as a good friend who loved his life, enjoyed his success, and never took it for granted. But what he cared most about was his family and the people whose stories he could tell because they trusted him. Harold leaves the best kind of legacy, loving memories cherished by people, all of us, whose lives were made better and richer just because we knew him. Mm-hmm.